Let it go. Where? Let it go Where? right there. Let it go. Run, my people. Run. I gotta get out of here. To the next fad. To the next trend. To the next end. I said run, my people. Yeah. Run. To the next fad. To the next trend. To the next End thing. Look out! Ooh, I can't believe after all of these years we are still running and chasing after Dr. King's dream, only for it to become a nightmare for the families of Trayvon Martin, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, and many, many others. Say their names. We united together and shouted Black Lives Matter with a roar that was heard all over the world. Negro now it's new garden in the old t-shirt pile, right next to the one that says, don't worry, be happy. Everybody seems to be benefiting and profiting off of our pain and struggles except for us. So now, we want to escape and live in Wakanda forever, only to discover that it's a great movie, but it's fictional. It's an illusion. Good afternoon. Like Friends, family, loved ones, ones, enemies, contributors, distractors. Boys. This is Kevin Lewis on the Blueprint. The and uh, this week's show is called so A Walk right, Through Darkness right. or Walk Through the Shadows. The and I have a special guest on um, my sister, um, Supreme Lioness. And um, it's good to have you on, sister. Uh, how you doing today? I'm doing good today. It's good to be here today. Brother. Now, uh, what y'all hear in the background is actually a composition that this sister has, and um, it's called um, "Run the Running Man." Mm -hmm. And um, so, you are actually. I went to your website, and it says that you are a storyteller, uh, certified public speaker, right, and facilitator. Yes, yes. So, yes. um, tell me, what does all that mean? What do you do? Um, to make a long story short, all of that came about out of a uh, trauma that I had experienced um, at a young age. And sometimes we do things. I had been, been doing it um, over a period of years. I had been doing it anyway, and then I just went and got certified for it. Uh, the sto as far as the storytelling go, I never did know that I was a storyteller or a poet or, or whatever. That's just the title that people give me because of what I do. I write stuff down and I say it. How did you get certified? Um, I went to uh, classes. Went to I went classes. to uh, yeah. I, so. I attended classes, put in the hours, and uh, got certified as a facilitator as well as that but it's uh, like I said I have been doing it for years anyway and what do you mean you have been doing it for years what? well so um, tell a little bit uh, about my story okay. uh, just for in case people did, didn't know to bring everybody up to date I um, was molested from the age of I guess uh, maybe 4 to, to 13 4 to 13 4 to, 4 to, to 13 okay now, um, you were born in San Antonio? I was born in San Antonio, Texas. And you moved to? I moved to Fort, Fort, Wayne, Fort, Fort, Fort Wayne, Wayne, Indiana when I was uh, one years old. And okay. that's where I grew up at and, and okay. went to school. Okay. Yeah. And raised my children as well in Indiana. Okay. And how many children do you have? I have three children. Okay. Two daughters and a son. All right. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's go back to that because uh, we're talking about um, on, on your page, which is uh, SupremeLioness.com, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And I'm guessing it's like a bio on you. It says about the trauma that you went through. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're going to discuss the trauma and you being a facilitator. And you say you were a um, storyteller and a, a public speaker before you got certified. Well, you know... Not in the professional sense. Right. I would tell my story to anybody who listened, to anybody, any sister who needed to hear it. That That's what I'm saying. I okay. have been doing that forever. Just like we all do. Yeah, I was going to say that. We, yeah. we all kind of, when we, we have, we, we go through that. things and we talk about the things. we. Many of us do that. Some of us don't. Yeah, and, and, and that's what kept me stuck 
not talking about that. Okay. Not not talking about it. Um, because, you know, I was raised in the era where what goes on in this house stays in this house. Right. And that's how it is in a and lot of... that's how it is in a lot of a lot of thing, a lot of homes as far as we go as, as black people and stuff. But okay. you know, time times are, are, are changing now. I was talking to a young lady and she was telling me that you know times are changing. Kids are calling, um, able to call nine one one. Right. You know, and and speak up and speak out. But um, my my passion, what my heart is, is for us that didn't have um, a voice. Okay. back then and even if we did it was like i'll oh, go sit down somewhere you so fast you know and 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 not knowing what's really really going on not being believed or right. scared to tell it okay so let's talk about the trauma yes and, um let's get into that i'm gonna let you let you uh voice everything on that and what you want to speak about and and everything so let's go back to the beginning okay you were a young girl growing up you say four years old that's mm -hmm. your first memories that's my first memories okay that's my first memories and I remember it vividly to this day really yes to this day okay and um was it someone close in the yes family? yes it was a family member a family somebody member. who was supposed to protect and love me right yeah and um you did you tell? Actually, no. I was afraid to tell. Okay. Did they make you afraid? I was. Actually, they didn't. In in so many words, I didn't think that I would be believed, because I was always told that I was the bad one. So I'm like, who who wants to hear what 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 I have to say anyway, or that little black one over there she's going to be the bad one i mean you know as kids yeah. you hear this yeah um when we were all doing stuff they used to call my mother on the phone and say oh yeah your child did this your child did that and my mother used to say which one they used to say that little black one wow right so y'all right. had, had different um array of, of um skin tones in your family yes yes and it's yes. the darker ones that was looked that was yeah, frowned upon my. or we would be being bad probably because we were the darker <laughs> ones you know that that color struck we used to say color struck mindset mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. which have been imprinted on us here in this country um what and a lot of times without us even knowing like i know uh dr joy de Leary talks about things like that in post-traumatic stress syndrome mm -hmm. things that we carry as a people as luggage and a burden and as the tra from the trauma that we've been through right. and what has been imposed and imprinted upon us and we reenact that on our kids and our family members yes so yes. um so you didn't believe anyone would would actually not i i didn't and so as a as a result of that hold holding on to to that pain and and that shame and stuff because it as a kid it's a shameful thing and um i started acting out and um, got off into an addiction. Well, okay, let me take you back before I get to the addiction. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, years and years and you go to school and it's a terrible thing when you don't feel that you're pretty. You don't right. feel that you're worthy enough, you you know. And you you look at somebody else and like, wow, um, I wonder if they feel how I feel. Or who who can I tell this this secret that that that's festering on the inside of me? How do I deal with this thing that's making me feel so ugly when everybody's telling me I'm ugly anyway? So I might as well just be ugly. So who when you say everyone, who who did you mean by that? Who who encompasses? Not that? exactly everyone, but you know you black dog eat the kids oh, yeah, shut up yes, black that's what I, yeah yeah, yeah. and, and I, that's what i was wondering because uh you got family members that say that you got kids that when you start venturing out in the school or mm -hmm. in the neighborhood mm -hmm. they will say that now I, I remember things like that um you know um even when i got older when i came here people would say things like that and it's like man but and and after a while it's like that's your mind that's messed up. Mm -hmm. and, and I hear people say things like that today, like when they say bad hair and good hair. Exactly. That hurts me because I'd be like, so what the hell is good hair? Right, right. Like, you know, and you know, you know what I mean. It's like, nah, like tell me and I want to, I want you to tell me and I want you to say it so you can sound how silly, you know, but I, 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 I Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and so, so that's what you, you were hearing. And so you grow up and, and um, like you say, the good hair, bad hair. 
um, not liking the skin that you're in, not liking the skin color, and so really not liking yourself. Because if you don't like the skin that you're in, that means that you don't yeah. like yourself. Right. But if you're not educated, if somebody is not telling us, you know, the most of the stuff that I learned, I picked up from friends, uh, school, and from the streets. Because at a young age, I chose the streets. I chose right. to let the streets read by choice. You right. know, I, I didn't have to by choice because it was no judgment in the streets. Right. No, nobody did care that I was the, the dark one. Nobody cared that I had been molested. Nobody cared that I felt ugly. It's like we were a family. We fit in. Right. It, you know, the yeah, misfits, we, we all fit in. No judgment, absolutely whatsoever. And this is what many of us have to realize and embrace that a reason why a lot of our kids would choose the streets, no matter how you raise them in the household or the church or whatever you think you put them in, a lot of the times in a, the trauma that we as a people carry in our household, the kids would choose that because, you, like you said, it's no judgment. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us don't understand. It's like well, you, this person grew up in a good household. Why would you? And then you getting on the kids even further. But you got to understand why they're choosing the streets. It may be something within them or something that's happening in their house. It's always something. The lure of the streets are different things. And we want to blame the kids for going to the streets. But a lot of times that's where they feel comfortable. Exactly. And then after I'm, I get older and then I see people, um, old friends that I thought lived around me that I thought really had to get. They were going through stuff just like I was or some even worse. And how did you find or, that out? Or when you get older. Mm -hmm. As I got older, you talk to them? I, I talked. As I got older, I was like, it, it was a release for me to, to talk about being molested. It was a release for me to talk about how ugly that I felt. And the thing that, that, that my thing is, people will tell you, you need Jesus, you need God, you need spirituality. How can you go to a little girl or a little boy that's being molested, four, five, six, and tell them, you need God, you need, you need Jesus. Right. You, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And so sometimes the church have to understand that you just can't go up and, it's sad to say, Jesus can't solve everything. You can't tell right. people, you need, you need Jesus, you, you need the church, you need spirituality, you need the ancestors. That, that, that's not the answer. Right. That that is, that is so not the answer. And see that that was my my problem. They they said that I needed to get the devil out of me. I needed Jesus, you know, and I, I needed God in my life. Um I just needed this and I needed that. But see what I needed was to be fit, to be loved. Right. To be understood. To know that 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 I was hurting, you and know? to be protected because if it and went to on, be protected. it went on for a long time, and and to be protected. So so that's um, how I came off into getting off in, in, into the street. I became my own protector. I right. didn't take mess from nobody. I didn't care who it was. Especially if the people that the main people that are supposed to be protecting you are not doing it. And I grew up seeing that. Anybody that tells me that they love me, it's a lie. Right. Because the people that told me they love me, those are the ones when I was young that was hurting me. Okay. So that's the mentality that, that I had. You get, you get a shell? You yeah. get a, a hard shell? The hard shell was Callous. was 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 um one shell time a thousand. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really, okay, really really hard but see i didn't know that 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 was my 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 i was protecting the little girl inside of me right who couldn't protect herself so now i'm old enough you know i'm older i'm going to protect her and protect me too okay so that's the mindset that i had okay we're going to get into that i appreciate some of y'all that showed up uh aisha uh lade uh deborah Appreciate you showing up this week. Uh, Sharon, uh, she said, Hotep, appreciate your sister. Avelina, I appreciate you showing up. And um, Sharon also said, I'm uh, so sorry for your, for you, uh, Lioness. And um, Coretta, I appreciate you showing up. So you said, um, did you reach out to anyone to tell them? No, actually, not at all. Actually, I reached out to my favorite cousin. Uh huh. 
and I how told old, her, how much were they older than you? Same no, age? No, she was younger. She was a younger. year, a I year. Guess. She's a year uh, younger than I am. Okay. And at what point and, did you reach out to her? Um, I think I was ten. Okay. I think I was 10, I was telling her, well, I don't, you know, want to go out of town, I don't want to go here, and I don't want to go there. And she was like, why? I said, because they hurt me. And she said, what do you mean? And I told her. And so, she was like, um, well, why don't you tell me? I said, nobody believed me anyway. You know, it it had affected my mental. Who who would believe the ugly black girl? Who, who would yeah. believe the ugly kid anyway? You know, nobody wants to listen to me anyway. So that's when, when I got older, I was my, 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 my protector, you know. But the, but the thing of it is, is so I go from that to an addiction. Now these, I'm, I'm acting out. I mean, I'm clowning. You know what I'm and, saying? And you're doing that. Why, you, why do you think you were actually clowning and acting out? I, I didn't know that I was actually calling out for help. Right. I wanted help. But I didn't know how to ask for it. I was hurting and I felt miserable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And did and didn't even know what was going on. Didn't even know why I was was acting out like that. Until I was like, okay, I got to, I got to stop this. Either I'm gonna wind up dead or I'm gonna wind up in the pen. At what age were you at at that point? When you realized that you gotta stop this? I think I was uh, 30, 35, but you have Whoa. to understand, I took my first drink, I took my first drink to numb the pain when I was six years old. My mother was an entertainer, she worked at one of the five star restaurants. My daddy traveled and played with James Brown and, and Millie Jackson and different people and stuff. They had quarter parties and stuff. You know, back then, yeah. that, that yeah. was the thing. So the kids, okay, I'll pay y'all to clean up, you know, put the bottles over here in this net. But I was taking the the uh, Blatz, never will forget, Blatz and Paps Blue Ribbon and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So I was taking the beers and I was hiding them and I was drinking them. And that was my escape. And, and, I and liked your escape it. will be looked upon by others as being bad. Yeah. Not as, as a kid looking to escape or needing help. When I drink, man, I didn't feel nothing. Right. I, did, I didn't feel nothing. And nobody knew. And no, nobody knew because I would do it um, like on the weekend and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mother's at work. Daddy's already traveling. Sisters, older sisters watching us. They're watching uh, Dick Clark or whatever, you know, back yeah, then yeah. and stuff. So I'm in the room, you know, playing with the, actually never, ever played with baby dolls. I would always take the baby dolls because to me, the baby dolls were a sign of weakness. Mm -hmm. They were small. People can hurt you. So I would take the heads off of them. And just throw, so it came to a point where they stopped buying me dolls and stuff because I'm like, okay, little girls play with dolls. And they can hurt little girls if they see little girls playing with dolls. So I'll tear this doll up and they will never see me play with a doll. That's the mentality that I had. That's the, wow. men, that's the, that's the mentality that I had. And I mean for years and years and years. So... Um, as you were saying about um, that, that hard shell, it wasn't until I changed my mindset. I, I had to, I said, okay, I'm, I'm tired of living like this. So what, what is going on with me? Why is that um, I'm sabotaging myself? I'm a binge drinker. I'm a binge eater. Something is, something is going on. I got tired of living the way that I was living. And I said, okay, you, you, you need to do something. And the hardest thing I had to do, brother, other than to accept my mother's transition, was to look deep inside of me and ask myself, who are you? That thing almost blew me away. So you, you never went through therapy? No, 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 no. I, I, well, I read. Uh, Okay, so I, I, let me. I wanted to backtrack that because not the conventional therapy. Because not you, the conventional. You, you, those that was therapy. What you did was therapy. Mm -hmm. you, you self, you know, you, you found something to give yourself therapy and came right. to a realization, realization that you needed to change and what was happening to you. Oh and everything. yes, yes. 
Yes, yes, definitely. definitely. And um, our um, people, that's one of the, the crucial things that haunt us as a people because we don't, we don't know how to handle trauma. Not just the person going through the trauma, but we don't know how to, to deal with trauma that people has gone to. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone seeks um, mental um, help. They'd be or, labeled as crazy or something. Yeah, the people would look at them uh -huh. and they would, that, that would be a characterization that they would be labeled with. That that person went to, you know, was saying a shrink or whatever because you're not, or you weak. Yeah, mm. yeah. You you don't know how to deal with your problems. But but you know we 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 go through these things on a daily basis, and we are so accustomed to the pain. We are immune to the pain. Till now, it's just the norm. And, and this know? is what I think about. And and when I hear people say we are resilient people, because I talk about our struggle a lot. Right. And what a, a lot of the comments that come out of us is, man, we are resilient people. And I, my thing is, yeah, we are. But we shouldn't have to, have be, to be, and we shouldn't, and and it's still with that resiliency, we still have trauma from it, because part of us is self-inflicted mm -hmm. trauma, mm -hmm. because they've done such a good job on us that we don't like ourselves. Exactly. That we exactly. we will see another like it's even in our kids. They would tease you about your complexion, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, tease you about your hair or we will say things like good hair and things like that we're not realizing that that's trauma that's right, right. You know, you're a victim of trauma mm -hmm. and that's why I say we shouldn't yeah we are resilient but I don't want to be we need to stop having to be resilient we that's need to true. start rebelling against those that are causing us to have to be resilient it's like a boxer they say oh man he got a good chin because everybody keep punching him <laughs> you know yeah, right, yeah, so right, I don't right. want to be hit like that I'm tired of being hit and that's my mentality when I hear people say things like, yeah, we're resilient people, as if that's a badge. Yeah, it is in a way, but that means that you're constantly going through things. But and, 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 uh, um, let me piggyback off that, what you said. So we as, as black women mm -hmm. are most hard on ourselves. And I'm so glad that I am seeing a shift now. It's just like, you stand up there. You're sitting right there. And I'm like, okay, the brother is fine, this and that. Nice shirt, nice this and that. Now, as far as sisters go, you'll see a sister and you'll look. The first thing you look for is something that's out of place with her. As I'm just saying, mm -hmm. not all of us, but a lot of us, if we're just going to keep it real. We'll look for something that's out of place with that sister. And I know she did. Mm, mm, mm. Or you can be anywhere, the church, you can be in the club or, or anywhere. You feel somebody looking at you, if it's the opposite sex or if it's somebody that you are attracted to, be that man or woman. I, I know they was looking at me, I felt them looking at me. But if their sister's on that same vibe, that same wavelength that you are on, you feel her looking at you, she may even want to compliment you. The first thing, I don't know why she's looking at me. Because that that's that's learned behavior. We were we were taught that, and 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 Dr. Joyce she talks about that in her book. Right. She talks about that in her book, but it but that's what we do, and so we we, as 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 black women, I can't speak for all the women of the world, but as as black women, we are taught how to smile through the pain, smile through the trauma. Take care of everybody before us, even right. if we get around to us. Do this, do that. Don't say anything about your mentality. Be depressed. You know how you have functional alcoholics. I was depressed for two years, I know, a functional and depressed, but still functional because I'm still going to work and I'm still doing this. And I, I didn't know. That it was my thought, it's my thoughts that I had not dealt with that, that hurting little girl inside of me all of those years until now. I had to deal with it. Right. I had to. Now, I, I kind of smirk when you said that about how women, black women, how initially how y'all look at each other. And I, I smile, I smirk for two reasons. Because I hear people, you know, when you, when you, when we joke about that as men, or I may even joke about that in the past about, a woman to say, 
she thinks you did. I'm like, you just saw her. You don't even know her. Right. Or, she, and I'm, or they have, a, I, I don't like her. Like, we'll go to a Christmas party at work. Yeah. And yeah. you'll go with somebody and you'll have a woman with an attitude with another woman that they just met. And it's like what she's doing. She thinks she's, and you have this whole thing in your mind about this person off of a glance. See, we, were, we weren't taught as black women to look at a sister and appreciate her beauty and, and to to appreciate the difference. We were taught that that's our competition. Right. And I was going to always say that. Too. That, that, say that women. That's, but that's and, competition. And now, right another there. reason why I smoke, and I didn't want to really, because I got a, a, some, a, a show that I'm thinking on, and uh, it's about black men and how we are raising our young men, because we look at each other as competition a lot, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of times with, with males, we bond, but we got to have adversaries. And we we um, build up these adversaries for no reason. Mm-hmm. You stay on that side of town. I'm on this side of town. Whatever it is, I don't care what it is. You go to that school. We go to. This right. is my clique. That's your clique. And when we look at each other, natural things is as we size up other males. Right. Right. You know. And um, this person is bigger than, or he he you know he works whatever it is he works out and 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 I I think that's a natural thing because that that's happened in an animal mm-hmm. you know that's mm-hmm. how they pick like okay can yeah. I challenge this right. person right. or do I right. need to leave this person this animal, animal alone? alone yeah you know and that's what they do they make themselves look bigger or whatever and I think right. men posture a lot and I think a lot of a lot of that negativity, but I'm, I'm getting into a whole different thing that I want to talk about on another show. But I understand what you're saying, and it's crazy that we do that as a people because you say you don't think any other race actually does that. I think other women um, from other races, they may see that woman as competition, but I don't think they do it like attack. They mm-hmm. just say, wow, you know, she's beautiful or, you know, she her body is this. And, and I don't and I think they just look at themselves and say, OK, you know. But we're changing. Right. We, so why do you we, say we're changing? We are changing from from talking to different sisters. Mm-hmm. Different. Like I say, I can't speak for the the uh, Caucasian uh, yeah. Asian. I can't because I'm a black woman and I identify right. as black. Right. So as as um, the I think the sisterhood is 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 getting stronger. You think it's getting stronger? Yeah, I I, I know it is. Yeah, okay. I'm just, I'm just gonna put it out there. Right. Yes, I, I I believe that. Firmly, we, we, um, the the behavior that we were were taught, we're seeing that that that's not right. You know that that's not competition. The sister doesn't have to be competition. So now, um, we are rallying together. Fix your in, crown, queen. In, like in like, like I see things. They say things like that, <laughs> and it's like um, I'm like, okay, I feel that. I'm just. It's yes. a still, it's a long way for us to it's, go because it is a because long we, way we've us. come. We've gone through a lot, so we have to undo a lot of, un- we got to do a lot of unraveling. But we won't be able to unravel or to do anything if we don't deal with us first. Right. It That's what I mean. It, it, it we have to, to see be, that we, oh we've been tangled and it's tangled and we have to catch ourselves. And um, I know like with me, I get kind of ticked off with another dude. If I see a black man in another place and I speak to him and he just keeps walking and in my mind, I'd be like, it's the opposite, like brother. Mm-hmm. I'm, you know, this is this is how you're supposed to be. You uh-huh. supposed to say you supposed to acknowledge me, like we see each. I don't care if it's that nod or whatever. But I, I try to go out of my way when I see another black man. I say, "What's up, brother?" Or I say, "You know, if we're not in that conversation range, I'll be like, what's up?'" And then I get ticked off when they just like ignore me. <laughs> and it's like, man. And then it's almost like you want. So, but why do you get ticked off? Because I'm thinking, like, man, you lost. Like, brother, we got to acknowledge each other when we see each other. Like, we in this world, and it's we all we got. And you trying to say, like, like I seen somebody, like, where I work, play, towns I work in. It's mostly, it's no blacks. Mm-hmm. So when I see a brother in a store, and I see him, and it's like, you know, and then what he tries to do is, oh, just because you're black, I'm not going to not. They, they're expecting us to acknowledge each other. And that's what I'm like. <laughs> so when you keep yeah, acting, yeah. I'm like, bro, like you ain't see me like give you that nod. Oh, so, okay. so, you, so that's why I get. I'm saying I'm. I'm it's the opposite. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm mm-hmm. like, bro, you when you don't acknowledge me, you know, I tell me where you at. Like we we supposed to see each other and be like, I see a sister. How you doing, sister? You know. And sometimes I have people like cross up. That's how I'm saying. There's so many few of us in these places. A sister stopped me and like she was with a bunch of other 
people from other races. Like, if, I guess there's that. And she like, wait, what? She like, brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, that's yeah, how we're supposed to be. Like, mm -hmm. I don't care who you mm -hmm. with, whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was like that. I'm, um, I want to say, uh, uh, appreciate some more people that that showed up, and I'm gonna read a few more comments. Um, I appreciate Lisa showing up, and she said, my family called me crazy for getting therapy, and uh. That's unfortunate. I think that's the mindset that many of us have. That's the mindset, yeah. Um, because that word crazy, see, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be crazy for not doing for it. For not doing it. And um, that's a, uh, and Chris, I appreciate you showing up, brother. He said, thanks for sharing the powerful memories of days gone by. He said, uh, back to the basics. And uh, Sharon says, so much is coming to light. So many were molested by family members as children. Mm -hmm. And she has the tears on there. A broken heart and I appreciate that comment that's one thing that I think a lot of family because I think families will sweep that under the rug because they see that as a deficiency in their family maybe that's what they think and I don't know a lot of times people don't want to deal with those things and you know what and, and, and I think that it has been going on for eons right and so that's how they handled it back then by you know forgetting said, about it that by forgetting about it or just don't say just don't say anything and then so from generation to generation that that's how that thing it it, it happened right. and then um as the the i'm not going to say victors as as the survivors of that stuff we are left with the pain and the shame of 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 learning how to deal with it learning how to to be ourselves like i was telling you one of the hardest things i had to do was figure out who I was. Who am I without the title? Who am I uh, um, not being a victim? Who am I not seeing that I was molested? Who am I without this? Who am I? And I'm like, wow. And what I had to do, and I mean layer by layer by layer, and it was so painful to me. You talking about crying, like it was like a peeling the onion, peel it, peeling an onion. And crying to me has always been a sign of weakness. I was taught that as a young, at young, because I had to protect myself. Right. <clears throat> so, so to to cry that no, nobody, you never will see me. That. I don't care. You can beat me. You can do whatever. I will not cry. But and I'm in here, and I mean, and I'm crying, and it will not stop because that's the pain. That that pain and that hurt. It was coming up, brother, and I could, I couldn't stop it. But after. I will say months, maybe even a year, of peeling layers and layers and layers was this little girl, hurting little girl, who I had built a wall, oh, that just make me tear up, yeah. who I had, had built this wall that, and I promised her that nobody would ever hurt her again. You know what I'm saying? And so after seeing that, I'm like, Wow, that man. So, and, and I had to embrace her. And then I had to let her know, I know that I told you that you was black and ugly. Because that's what they told me. I'm sorry I couldn't protect you. But you need to go. Be a little girl. You know, go have right. fun. You you might want to stay here. You might even want But you can't live here. You can't live in here anymore. I need for you to go be a little girl so I can learn how to be a woman. You, you, we have to let that, th that's one of the hardest things I had to do because now I can't say I'm acting out because I was molested. Now I can't say I got this hard chill because of this. Because I'm, I'm dealing, I'm dealing with, that's why I was acting out. That's why I was do. that's why I can't show love. That's why to cry is a weakness. And it all stemmed from that. It all came from that. And it was like, wow. But no, I didn't go to, to uh, therapy. I, I, I read. Right. So I, when you say you read, read, what do you read? What did you, what did you read and what do you read? Well, first start off, I read the Bible. Okay. The, the, that was the, the first thing. I read the Bible and then I, uh, self-help books. I read uh, books by, by T.D. Jakes. Mm-hmm. Um, Dr. Joy um, and, a, and a couple of other people I can't remember right now because it was uh, um, in uh, increments here and okay. here and there and stuff and um, so yeah I would just just pick up a, a, a book Earl Nightingale anything that that would help me and mostly 
mostly praying. But then that that came to me because I was like, so you tell me that I need God and I need Jesus, and you're supposed to protect me. Where were you when they was hurting me? I was going to ask you, was there any resentment with the church? Oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. See, it, it was, though, because the people in church, and I'm like, okay, I was molested. Really? So I'm like, oh, okay, all right. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it happens to us all in this and that. But I'm hurting. But well, just if it happens to us all, how do we get study, over it? If that's just, what they should have been. Just study telling me, turn it over to Jesus, but you're not telling me how. Okay. Give, give it to Jesus. How do I give it to him? I've been trying to give it to him for years. And I'm still, get, what, what, what do you mean by get, give it to Jesus? What do you mean turn to, what, what do I do? What? Do you Who think it's more so it just to? like a don't worry, be happy. If you have Jesus, you're going to be, forget your troubles. Type? And you know what? For years, that's the lie that, that was sold to us. Right. For years, that's a lie. It's a fairy tale. That, it's, it's, that was a lie that was sold to and us. And I think that was the plan for the whole. And um, you talking about upset when, when that didn't happen for me because I just knew. Okay. So so now you're giving Jesus an excuse for not protecting me when I was a little girl. Right. Well, he allowed you to go through it. Okay, but if he loved me and he protects all of his children, why didn't he protect me? And so that, that got me to thinking that I'm not the only one. And and believe this or not, it's... it's like an energy, a frequency that, that we are on. We can tell each other. Right. Just like a um, an addict can tell an addict. You know what I'm saying? Pe people know people. And so I can look, spot a sister, a brother, a mile away. Been having that gift. Been having it since I was a little girl. My mother used to call people and say, oh, she's seeing Hanks again. Hanks? Hanks. Ghosts, spirits. Oh. oh, I didn't have to play with anybody. I had friends to play with, <laughs> and so I was uh, so so I was I was weird, you know. But it, it it didn't bother me. It that that didn't bother me. But my thing is 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 we need to start our healing, right. and and how we do that, we change our mindset. Okay, we now change I'm, I'm, our mindset. I'm going to read another, some more comments. Uh, Lisa, the one that said her mother and uh, constantly, her aunt and her mother constantly tried to find. I hate when this happens. It just jumped off your comment. Um, she said, my mother and aunt constantly try to find something to criticize me about. And uh, that's tough when it's coming from your loved ones mm -hmm. and people you look up to. And uh, she also said, I had to learn to love myself because I was surrounded by narcissists. People. Yeah. Um, Teresa, I appreciate you showing up. She said, we are learning to love and appreciate each other, but it has taken a long time to get there. Admiration of our dynamic differences is a key to loving our differences. I appreciate the comment. Yes. And, um, Aisha, she said, this rapper named uh, Akbar V recently put out her um, uncle molested her and all her female cousins grew up and the family swept it under the rug. Hmm. She said he, he molested her and all her female cousins growing up. And the family swept it under the rug. She said some of the of her kids are by her uncle. Wow. Wow. Um, I think it's a lot of cases like that that people don't talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times now people are becoming um, more outward and open with that, like I think you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, Derek said we, um, as a people, I'm guessing, have... Uh, taught by the Jim Crow people from day one we should unlearn stuff that our loved ones have taught us from birth um, we have been taught by the Jim Crow era people from day one he said we should unlearn stuff that our loved ones have taught us but we have to recognize what it is we need to keep and what it is we need to discard mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. why I say like books like when you read books by like Dr. Uh, Joy DeGru Leary and things like that um, Amos I mean, it's, it's a lot of books out there. I don't want to just 
pinpoint any right, pers- right, right. particular art. Amos Wilson, I, I, so I was going to name him. But those people, when they're talking, um, Dr. Francis Cress Wells, and they're, uh, they're therapeutic. Uh, Malcolm X, yes. who taught us how to hell, hate ourselves. I mean, that's direct. you mm-hmm, know. Mm-hmm. And we have to realize and listen to what they're saying. And they're telling us that um, the ones that's not going to these doctors, um, we, like you say, the books could give us therapy. But it's a lot of things that we realize that even our loved ones, like well, I also have an issue when people say, well, this person was the greatest person this grandparent or this parent but they still had their deficiencies exactly with their, that the luggage that they were carrying that they were teaching us and it's not their fault they're it's doing not. what's best or what they knew how to do that's exactly and i have to look I at that say. as a dad that i didn't do the best things for my kids mm-hmm. i did the best i could for my kids so i could feel good about everything i did and understand as I got older the deficiencies that I may have. And that's a discussion that I should have with my kids about them raising their kids. Mm-hmm. Or maybe mm-hmm. they see it themselves and just be like, you know. <laughs> it, my relationship with, with, with my, I am in the process of repairing a relationship with, with one of my daughters. Okay. We're getting, we have went years without speaking. Um, my, my son and, and one of my daughter, my oldest daughter, we just we we get along and stuff, right? Um, I didn't know that my addiction and me being out there in the street had an effect on her the way that it did. Okay. Because I'm hurting. I didn't know hurting me was hurting her. And you somebody and should look up to and it, exactly. And so and that was hurting her. And so even though we we never discussed it, I'm like, okay. I hurt her, right. so I have to apologize. I'm like I'm, I'm sorry. You know, I was just doing the best that I could do. Or you really don't have no excuse. I was out there. I was doing my thing. It is what it is. But another thing, you, you, you we have to realize too as parents. Like, like I told you, it's different with my grandkids. I let them know that hey, <laughs> yes, I got you. Me, my loves you, and and this and that. But then again, too, you have the the family members. And, and people that um, I rem- that I remember winners. That's what I call them and stuff. I remember. Win- oh yes, she's changed. But I remember this. You can only apologize. I don't care if it's to your parents. I don't care if it's to your children. Or your, whoever it is. You can only apologize so much. And then after you apologize. It's up to them to whether accept. they accept it or not. Right. It's nothing you can do but go on and live your life. It, it, either they accept it or they don't. I spend years trying to make years trying to make up for what I feel that I was lacking in as as a mother, as a sister, as a cousin. You know, you see people. Hey, it's a new. And contrary to that, they're always going. If you have to try to prove your worth to anybody, you'll never be worthy enough in their eyes. Only thing they remember me from is street, and they haven't seen me in years. Oh, I remember. Oh, I heard you. I let them go with that because I know I don't even wear that jacket no more. That thing don't even fit me. That that's not me. <laughs> no, that that is not me. All right, I'm hit another comment. I, Aisha Ray said one of the best friends, one of my best friends, was molested by her grandfather. Up until we were in the eighth grade, she told her mom and grandmother, and they said she was lying. Mm-hmm. She's always been very promiscuous because of that I appreciate yeah. it and I think that's um, I'll, I'll, you said something earlier about the shell and I think my thing is also I think that our people our women have built up a shell over generations for a lot of things and uh, women that that I hear speaking um, that's single and they're trying to find a man and they, they find these men that say that you're too hard you know, and they ask me, they're like, what What the hell is all of that? I mean, I have to be hard. I'm a single parent. I'm raising kids. I'm doing this. I'm fighting the world. I can't afford to be soft. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm just like, you know, that's a problem that I think I men us recognizing our deficiencies and what we've been through and the result of those things we have to be um, cognizant of and understanding. What do they mean too hard, though, brother? Like independent. Like, you know, and I, and this is what I think, I, I mean, 
I'm like I say, I, I have a whole different show that I want to talk about. I'm yeah, gonna get on it, yeah. but but I mean, like this is what I, I often I often tell them. That's the problem with that man. A strong man can handle a strong woman. Our women have to be strong. Yes. We have to be strong to put up with what we've been um, put, uh, put up against. Exactly. And a lot of exactly. times, our women have. I mean, think of Harriet Tugman if she wasn't strong. Mm -hmm. She was scared of spiders crawling through the. Through the woods, trying to find her freedom, scared, mm -hmm. worried about snakes and frogs or whatever. She couldn't, have, she couldn't be afforded that type of. But did it anyway. And she, I mean, that's what I'm saying. She had to put all that stuff behind her right, and say, I'm, right. "I'm going in this creek. I'm crossing this creek because I want something. I'm, I got." And I, that's a microcosm of our women because they have a lot of things that they gotta. They can't afford to be out here crying over every little thing that happened and showing weakness. They gotta be strong. They gotta be a lioness. You didn't say supreme rabbit. Right, right. You know, you know what I'm saying? You didn't say supreme deer. You know what I'm saying? You right, picked right. the lioness because right. that's a a, a a strong someone that's strong yeah. that has to put up with things, exactly. that has to feed the cubs and have to deal with these right, male right, lions. Right. You can't be frail. And that's what I try to tell and I understand what they're saying, but I'm like that's a problem with the way we're raising these boys that they're frail. Because I always say a weak a weak person don't want a Rottweiler. Mm -hmm. You can't hold mm -hmm. him. You can't mm -hmm. walk down the street with him. Right. You'll get right, drugged. Right. Right. You need them dudes that's that's talking about a woman being too strong. They need poodles. <laughs> so our women need to be strong to get us where we at. But that's another conversation. Um, I'm gonna read some more comments. Then we're gonna get back into the the shadows. Um, okay. Shan said. Um. um she said, we need to create a woman's support group. And I've heard that often. I, I even had a friend that was trying to do that create, uh, as a business, a spa where women could go get pampered and, mm -hmm. and discuss mm -hmm. things like that. But it never manifested. Um, I think that would be a great, you know, I think women do need to talk. I think women need to get together and, and speak about their issues. I think men need to do that also. Um Chris said, this is a dynamic topic. I appreciate the comment. Sharon also said, I think... We live with being molested as a way of life from slavery times. We just learn to accept it, both our, our males and females. And I think it's different with males because of how they would be looked looked at with other men. It's a shame. Yeah, it's a, it's a shameful thing. I mean, even if like yeah. you go to prison and I, nobody's gonna say, "Yeah, man, I got." You know, right, 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 right. Nobody right. gonna say that. Right, and, and right. that's even a knock. They gonna say, "Yeah, I'm looking at." He probably gonna, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because we look at it and we're not looking at it as an embracing thing. Like, man, you hurting over this. We look at it with ridicule. How did you let that happen? Yeah, right. Now, if it's right. a young boy, we probably won't say that. But you know, if you're a man, and you you like, you know, we look at a man differently. And I mean, like, it's been people, I think Mike Tyson said that. Somebody that Iron Mike, I always liked that he got that, that name, Iron Mike. You know, right. people used to say, man, would you fight him? Like, you know, in fear for this much money or Sugar Ray Leonard. It's been people that said these things. And I think we just put that out. Mm -hmm. You know, like, we don't mm -hmm. discuss it as men. Like, um, we always think, look, well, if you happen to as a child, you should come back old, when you get old and kill that person. That's, I mean... Right, right, right. And, yeah, and that's still you. not going to give you, um, it's going to be something, but it's not going to be enough. Yeah, because so, you're not dealing with the issue. Yeah, you're not dealing with the, not, the, the harm that has been done, the, the damage and everything. And we don't, we have, as a people, don't know how to deal with damage. Yeah. Well, you know what? We, we deal with it in, in our own way. You know what I'm saying? And and so as far as the, the, the male and, and female thing, it's... It's a thing where we always make so big about the difference in the black man and the black woman. Right. What about the togetherness? What about the similarities that, that we have? I don't need, uh, she's too hard, she's too this, she's too, and he's not this, and he's not. What about the love? Isn't that what uh, uh, the church and spirituality and all that stuff, what, what, what about the love? How can I love you when I don't love myself, though? Right. So that that's that's a big difference. That that is a big big difference. If black men are taught that black women are ugly, they're nappy head, they this and that, don't you think that's gonna be embedded in that brother? 
regardless yeah. to what he says. Your action speaks louder than your words. That's just like if somebody tell you, I love you 24-7, but they beating the heck out of you or they treating you like a dog. Love is an action word. So how can you love me and you, you, you treat me? So how can you be down for me? But every chance you get, you always putting me down and stuff. Right. So I, th I think it needs to be a, 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 a togetherness. And how we are going to bridge that gap, I don't know. I I don't have the the solution. That's work that we got to get to. Solution for that. Yeah, that's work that we have to we have to come up. And I don't think as individuals we're supposed to have like like Sharon said. That we need to talk. You know, that's the first thing we need to talk. And and I know I brought that up to brothers that hey man, let's talk. Let's get together and just talk and put right, it on camera right. because some people that's not in that conversation they will understand that we as men because we put on a facade. You know, right. we we put up that that shield or that shell mm -hmm, that everybody's mm -hmm. hard. Now I tell people my best friend um probably talking to this person as a man because he would say, Man, I was scared to talk to I remember I was scared to talk to that woman. Mm -hmm. Men don't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, nah, I'm the man. I, I hollered at her and it was blah blah. Right, right. But we right. don't say, man, I saw and I was you know, we don't talk about being young men and being scared or right. being scared to ask somebody to the prom or to dance. Mm -hmm. you, and that's mm -hmm. a normal thing. Mm -hmm. But we don't put that, we don't present that vulnerable side of us right. about anything. Fear or man, I saw that dude, I was about and I was like, Man, my heart was pumped. We don't do that. Mm -hmm. And a lot sometimes it is like that. We could tell it's like that with people. Mm -hmm. But uh, we don't talk about that. So I'm saying if we, as men, I always say if we got together and just talked about topics, anything, normal growing up, younger people, younger dudes understand that this right. is normal and you don't have to put on that shell. Mm -hmm. Brother, I'm mm -hmm. just like you. It ain't your generation that's jacked up and my generation was just fine. Our generation's been jacked up for a long time. Long time. So that's long healing. Time. Talking and communication is healing. That, that is healing. And that, that is what we need. Now, I also feel, when I was listening to you talk, that men in the family should have protected you. But if it's not men in the family. Right. So, and I, this is how so. I do I, I go by the onion layers. Somebody in a community should have protected you if they would have known what was going on. And I'm not just talking about you. Oh, okay. Protected. Right, right, right. I'm saying just. the men in the family, because I have a thing that I say. If I find out that something like that is in my family, we're going to have a fishing trip. Mm -hmm. And we, I'm mm -hmm. afraid of somebody. You know, like Godfather, you're going to go on a fishing trip and somebody ain't coming back. And I would say that even on social media because that's how vehemently I feel about that. Those situations, if you got that uncle or that person in a family and you believe and you know that because they'll say, well, don't, don't lead them with that person. If y'all know that yeah. person is like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. You know what, then we need to, and I told somebody, y'all need to have a fishing trip with that person. I had um, seven uncles on my father's side. Um, one uncle, my mother only had one brother. But a whole village of uncles, grandparents. And, but I was afraid to say anything. Why? I didn't feel that, who would believe me? Okay, it's the belief because I was asking because sometimes women don't say nothing because they they want to protect that person also. Like nah. if they do something, they're gonna do something to this person. It's gonna be my fault. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people, because I know people that <laughs> they act mm -hmm. like that. You know, like I don't want this person to know. No, you know. no, no. I wasn't trying to. Protect so did you ever get any did kind you? of? Um, did you confront the person? Yes, I did. You did. Yes, yes, I did. How, After how, years and years out. Um, I was like, okay, how do I do this? So the church was like, okay, you have to forgive. So, but this is the thing they tell you to forgive, but how do you forgive? St I thought I had forgiven this person, but if I'm still having nightmares and still think that forgiveness is not there. Right. And sometimes I can see you and I can smile and sometimes I can see you and I hate you right. because of what you did to me. So, it's, it begins with, with you. I, 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 I'm a firm believer. It has to come, it has to come from, from within. It has okay. to come. It has to come from, And even though I confronted the person and stuff, they never said anything. They never said They never anything. responded? They never you confronted responded them face to face? Face to face. Face to face. 
I am Supreme Lioness. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> The growl. Like. <laughs> I'm just playing, but yeah, face, face to face. And it's like, you know, you you did that, and I know you did that, and stuff. And you and know you did and that, and you and you know you did that. But I have to forgive you, you know, in order for me to move. This is what I'm thinking. I I I have to forgive you, and then in a sense, it it's true. You do have to forgive them because you don't want to live your life with this hatred and stuff in in your heart you you have to you don't have to forget but you have to forgive that person you may you may feel that you may, may not have to but in order for a healing 100% healing brother will never be 100% healing yeah, but I like the fishing thing better myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I, I would feel a lot better. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I I would forgive them a lot more. But that's the man part of me, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the lion uh, part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but that's that's great that you got to come. Do you think it was other people that 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 um was traumatized by this person? Yes. In the family? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 But nobody never talk about it. Really? So now you were storytelling about this. How did you get into talking about this? You say you have been doing it all your life. I'd, people, well, I would come um, be like, hey, sister, what's going on? Predominantly with the sisters, hey, what's going on? Oh, well, I feel like this. Okay, well, let me tell you what happened to me. I was molested. I was this and they were like, You would just open up like that? Oh, yeah. It, it was in me. Because I have so much of a passion, so much love for us. It doesn't matter. That telling that story, that, that doesn't make me, I'm not ashamed of it. At what point it. were you able to do that? See, like two years, two years after, two years after I came, I peeled the layers off of the little girl. Okay. Two, two, about, two, it took me about two years because I'm like, okay, nobody really wants to hear it. You know, nobody. You know, and then I'm like, okay, but that's that little girl in there. She's shh. That's why I made that silent cries. You know, it's a shh. Just it, now, just silent cries is your your first CD. Your first CD is that mm -hmm. the first that's one you put the, out? That's, that's the, the one that's out now. Yeah, that's that's the what one I that's played happening. a snippet of in the beginning with our uh, Run Negro Run. That's the second. Oh, the Running that's Man. I mean, see, I'm that, saying that's the second CD. That's oh running. yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm sorry because you told me this. Uh, you told me that you got another CD coming out <laughs> uh -huh, with the Silent uh -huh. Cries. That's um, on that's on my first yeah, the first okay. CD. That's right. And you do you have the title for the next one coming out? Uh, not yet. Not yet, but that's a, that's in the progress. Yeah, uh, it's, progress. it's in the progress. But then that's why I made uh, Silent, Silent Cries. Cries. And it's spelled um, with uh, C R I S E Y E S. Yeah, the si the Silent Cries, cause like, you you can't see it, you know, you can't hear it and stuff. And um, that that came about. Um, I was missing my mother. Mm -hmm. And so, and I have a picture of her on my altar and stuff. And so, and I, then I was talking to her, and and I was explaining to her, you know, why I was acting out, why I did what I did, and this and that. But you didn't know that I was being molested and stuff. And it's like nobody hears, nobody want to hear the bad little girl. Nobody hear the silent cries. And that's how that came about. Do you think that those people pick out that that uh, child that they think will be easy prey? Like people won't believe. Yeah, yeah. Cause yeah. I hear that a lot I, when yeah, people say that yeah. they looked at me that you know a certain way. Anyway, I heard yeah. that from people. Yeah, honestly, I yeah, yeah. I so did. they're predators, did. and they know the prey to go after. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I I honestly believe that. But we we can be we can be healed. We we can get better. You know, we we can love. That that's my main thing. The sisterhood. The bond, the sisterhood, yeah. just love and, and that. If that's women, what, yes. If women got together and, and had conversations. Because I know I did something um, probably about three or four years, probably about four years ago, where I was paying for women to talk on, on and, and it was recorded mm -hmm. by Dove Productions, a black owned production company. The men did the same, but it was only like three of us. But we were just three brothers talking about different topics. 
and it was more pertinent topics than the things I just want to talk about, like normal life things. But we're talking about violence and education and this, this and this. But I wanted when women had a panel, but it was more than women like to talk. Women like to get together. Y'all, y'all much more um, advanced at communication than we are. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, so the women got together. There's some business on it, whatever. And they were just talking. And I, I told the sister, OK, whatever y'all want to talk about, just women having discussions. And we're going to do men having discussion. Then we have the next video going to be all of us. And it never came about. We just did mm-hmm. the men and the women. Mm-hmm. But um, I think that women should be getting together to, to discuss things that's from a different array of things. Like uh, Sharon said, women need to talk. Y'all need to just talk normally. But I'm saying make it count because you could, if you record it, just like writing a book, we could talk about things. But if you don't write it down. Nobody a generation exactly. or so later can exactly. learn from it. Exactly. So that's what I think women should be getting together and having discussions. And you don't have to be a doctor. You don't have to be a you know business owner and this and that. You just be a normal person going through trauma or just going. Because I think our life, we walk through a shadow in a valley that has been um, man-made. Mm-hmm. For mm-hmm. us to walk mm-hmm. through, and it's death. Mm-hmm. That valley will kill your dreams. It kills our um, history. Yeah, yeah. It, it's designed to kill our future. It's designed to kill our men and our women, our boys and our girls. You know, anything that's strong. So we are made to walk through this shadow in a valley that has been created by the system. Mm-hmm. And I think all of us had stories. I remember growing up, they used to say, New York City, 8 million people got 8 million different stories. I think our people have a whole lot of different stories. Generational stories. That's yeah. what I, I, yeah. I think that we need to tell our stories and talk. Mm-hmm. And this is a, a healing process. It is. And it will also prevent things like this from happening. Because if me and a bunch of men sit there and we talk about what we would do if we caught anybody in our family doing right, this, right, then right. these young people, boys and girls will know, well, these are people I want to tell. Mm-hmm. And those predators will know, this is people I don't want to mess with. Yeah. And I think yeah. that carries over to our women, too. Like, outsiders hurting our people. You know, if they know that, hey, man, we're not going to tolerate this. And we're voicing that. You know, we also, you got to put things to action. I want to read that's, another that's comment. That's true. That's uh-huh. true. Uh, Avelina said, I became the protector. It became my strength. All my kids I've raised, and I, and uh, still to this day, I keep the faith in my Lord. Bless that my Lord bless me no matter what happened. My kids know, and I understand and feel the pain. I'm very outspoken with them. Um, now we don't sugarcoat, and that's a good thing. That's mm-hmm. one thing people try to sugarcoat like the church did. She said, um, we don't sugarcoat nothing. We sit and talk about everything, being there for each other. I love um, hard no matter what. Thank you for sharing. I will share my kids. I will share with my kids this evening. Uh, much to all who have been hurt. And she has the heart. And, uh, and uh, Coretta said, me too, Kevin. Take them fishing. <laughs> All right, gangster CC, um, <laughs> and, um, she said, uh, I believe you said, great show always. Thanks for feeding my soul. And uh, uh, Anthony, what's up, Dap? He said, uh, mind opening. I appreciate that. So then you started talking to yes. people and what they, they were receptive. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, so then what made you say, you know what, I need to do this. Seeing and feeling the hurt of, of us and and the, the the secrecy, everything has to be a secret. And um, I had got started and then family members was like, wish you shut up. Really? I wish, oh my Oh, because you're God. telling on, on the family, basically. I, um, wish, wish you shut up. Don't nobody want to hear about that molestation stuff. And then you have to understand that that is coming from me. Right. Be- and that's because that's it's, you're telling on them. It's, co- it's coming from the black. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, it's, the, it's, coming, it's coming from the one that raised their children in the project. It's coming from the one that, uh, that didn't um, 
go to college, coming from the one that didn't graduate, that went, that went back to school, got her GED, and then eventually went to college. You think you know, that, that was, was using that as a crutch? Oh my goodness, yes, yes. But why? Why is? She, why did? You can be, you can be looked down upon even in your own family. Oh yeah. And and I'm not gonna say the 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 black sheep. I was different. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I was different, and and I did my own thing my own way. Right. I didn't answer to nobody for nothing. You know what I'm saying? And so that 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 put me in a, a different category than everybody else going along with the norm. No, no, I'm not I'm not gonna do it like that. I'm gonna do it the way that that I want to do. And it. then you were affected at such a young age. At a, such a young age, and um, not knowing how to deal with it. That was my way of dealing with it. And I think that a lot of us don't understand the effect of being molested or, or trauma or even beaten or abused as a child. So why do you have to be so different? Why can't you act like you know even if you're old? So that that we we have to. We, we have to educate ourselves on the effect of, of things. Okay, you say you went through this, you went through this. But who, who, wants to hear, who wants to hear that? Because you're letting the family secret out. Right. Uh-uh. You, let, you always been the troublemaker. Shh. Cry silently. Shh. Silent cry. Right. So, so yeah. So, um, it's like, okay, you're, you're, you're doing this and you're, oh, she always do the most and she always do that. And so I, at a point I was like, you know what, well, maybe they right. But then I was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, they ain't never been right when it came to me anyway. Right. So, but, um, what keeps me going is us, women. Black women hurting. I love each and every one of my sisters, and it's so ironic that you should say something about um, Sister Sharon. Peace and blessings, Sharon said about us getting together and stuff. Um, my daughters were like, "What well, mother says she gonna be speaking and stuff? Um, do, you, do you need a team?" I'm like, "I don't know anything about Facebook. I don't know anything. That's why <laughs> I'm like, I, I don't know." So um, here, within the next three weeks to a month. That's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be. I'm going to have uh, a place for us, right. as, as women, to to get together, tell our stories, no judgment or or anything like that. So my team is putting that together for me as we speak. And let me know. I will let our listeners know. Yes, um, yes, definitely. The place that y'all are going to have it at, and when you're going to have it, and because that's I think it's interesting for people to bring their kids to things like exactly. that. Exactly. Um, exactly you know to talk just to, to hear women talk and then to see us in a light that we can communicate that's the main thing because you want things to be seen exactly and you want younger people to see us being able to communicate at that level and do and they may take that someplace else that we may oh, not yeah. live to see oh yeah you know that may go someplace else and, and, and help millions of people you know just this conversation between two people is being seen by other people mm -hmm. that that mm -hmm. can have an effect on somebody else. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's going to be out there. Sorry about that, y'all. Um, it's going to be out there for others to see. Right, right. And um, it's history. Mm -hmm. And if someone sees it, reads it, whatever, they hear your story, they, hear, they, they may ask you to come talk. Now, you gave me a website. Yes, yes. Um, www.supremelioness.com uh, dot com I do um speaking engagements I go and I speak and um uh as you know I do the I guess that was poetry what I did I yeah, don't know no, what it, I don't know now, what she, it was she's she being modest now <laughs> I don't know I don't know I never hear a lion roar with a whisper like saying I don't really know I don't really think <laughs> she came on there and she lit that up you and uh brother uh Jahi yeah, I came on and I was like, man, why they have to start out? They had the kids. I'm like, man, but when the dose, I'm like, why they have to start off, man? You just lit everything up on fire and just like, okay, y'all deal with the ashes. And y'all supposed to do that. Y'all supposed to burn that up at the end. You know, you burn the mic down, you smash the mic and all that at the end. But we sit up there picking up the mic for pieces. Like nobody else even got on the mic again. We just like, oh, I'm, come I'm, on. I'm a, um, it was squealing. <laughs> It was squealing, and they was like, like, what's that? And we didn't even notice. 
<laughs> but it was the feet, but you put the mic down, everybody I was didn't like, know what and it then was. it was just screaming and screaming, and we just sitting there like, dang, and then it was like, oh, somebody's like, oh, the mic, it's the mic, like, man, and then, but nah, that was, um, that was deep what y'all did, because brother Jahi he played the now. drums, uh-huh. y'all had already had that orchestrated, that, um, actually, was that a song or what? That, that, a, that um, brother Mandrea had asked me a few days mm-hmm. before that. So, you know, I'm working the overnight shift, so I'm like, I I can't think about that right now. So a couple of days before, I'm like, okay, it's down to it. I, I got to get it. Ancestors, help me. Come on, please, 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 please. <laughs> it ain't like throwing crap or nothing. So as I'm sitting there and I'm asleep, I get it. Right. Yeah, I, 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 I get it. So that's why I came differently. I am a revolutionary. No, I am revolutionary. Yeah, you are rep- and, and, and that was a and nice so, composition yeah. that you said. You know, um, I appreciate that, brother. Yeah, it was, it yeah. was, it was nice. And uh, the whole thing, the way it was presented, was nice. You know, y'all had to drum in the background, and you know, mm-hmm. so she being mm-hmm. modest, time I don't know what that was. What? You know what that? That was fire. That was a blaze. So. Um, <laughs> That that was uh yeah we was at the poetry thing I was like last not last weekend that yeah. was last weekend yeah last weekend man that was that was yeah. last that was weekend. nice and um, um yeah. those of y'all that missed it uh, I wish they would have recorded it in a professional way we had recordings from the phones mm. but I wish they had set it up and um, the whole recorded. thing was nice though yeah, it was I mean yeah. the sister that came up there that was talking about being abused too oh yeah yeah and I know y'all yeah, gave her a hug was, other women yeah. came up there and hugged her and her daughter came up there with her in the middle of her giving this poem yeah about what had happened what was happening to her but she was in an abusive relationship right right and the girl she said but you left me with a you know mm, I'm the one that was one. I'm the one the one yes yes and yeah. everybody I'm like that was that, like that was that was that I'm sitting up there like my allergies messing with me like you know <laughs> but uh yeah that was it was nice <laughs> that, you know? that 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 was nice and I'm yeah. saying that that's what we need as as um as women right that that is what we we need we need that healing we need that bonding we need that love we we, we need that and show these younger so, girls how to see another exactly. young lady and and not have this destructive or com- competitive mindset right right you know, right 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 that man you going to get your love i'm going to get my love no matter what mm-hmm, it ain't, it's mm-hmm, not a competition mm-hmm. i'm not going to absorb all of everybody's love or your candle going to shine my candle going to shine i know too. that's right so that's that's and that and like I said, I'm going to do a show talking about the brothers. And, and actually, the name of the show is going to be Raising Cain, mm-hmm. um, which is Cain and Abel's story. We're raising these young boys, with, sometimes without even knowing it, to be competitive with another black man when we see them. And that's what I'm going to do. But um, we wow, gotta, that's deep. That's so, deep, brother. Um, we, need to, we need to change how we are doing it. We stop thinking that we're doing things right. When everything is around us is wrong. It's wrong. And even when people say, well, I raised them in the church, or I raised them in this household, two family, it's still something happening that we're not getting it right. A hundred, we should be getting it right most of the time. But, but the darndest thing that gets me, regardless of whether it's Christianity, spirituality, Buddhism, or whatever you all been to, everything is supposed to be centered around love. And right. I don't see nobody All of them teaching, and, and, and that's then you have people that come in with that disguise of Christianity. That's what I'm saying, or yeah. the fantasy. And this is what irks me a lot of times when people just say, "Oh, the Jesus thing with church." To, it's like y- y'all just using that as a blanket of comfort, and it's deeper than that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's deeper mm-hmm. than that. Don't mm-hmm. tell me that Jesus is looking out for all these kids, or anyone is looking out for all these kids when all this damage is happening, happening to these to kids. Mm-hmm. And oh, what well, if it happens? Then you gonna tell me well that's the way God, you know, the will of God? No, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. the will of God is us getting our things together. I said things, getting our stuff, <laughs> our, fe- our fecal matter together, consolidating our fecal matter. Um, <laughs> And, and protecting our kids. Right. That's when you live through those, whatever you follow, whatever you were, that should be embedded in you and mm-hmm. it should be manifested in your actions. And stop telling people that's why the trauma keeps getting and goes on. Exactly. Because exactly. you're telling them things that's just a fairy tale. Mm-hmm. And bad things are going to happen to good people. You know, and that's just what, the way life is. Right. But we got to deal with it. You know, we got to find a way to deal with our issues our trauma 
or they're going to manifest themselves. Like you say, you act it out. Mm-hmm. The drug addiction, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff like that. They're going to act out. Our kids are acting out when they see us not being able to protect them. When they go on social media or the news and see us, uh, you know, kids getting hurt. And mm-hmm. like, you know, they mm-hmm. living in fear, too, because they're mm-hmm. looking at adults that's not protecting them. And then, um, like where I work, I work um, with women in, in recovery. And so they'll be like, okay, what was your drug of choice? Mine was alcohol. And now it's this meth thing. Mm -hmm. And over 97% have been molested. Really? Have been molested. And I'm like, wow. So, and then they're like, yeah, and I just, and and I numb the pain. So, because I get a chance to talk to each and every one that come through and stuff. And so, and I'm like, okay, how did we get here and what, what's going on? Well, um, I was molested. And nobody believed me. Or I was molested and I told somebody. And they said that I was lying. Or they let this go on. Or my mother or my father knew it was happening. They didn't do anything about it. One, one, one woman came through. And, and then I, I know we, we have to go. But she was so, so out of it. She was selling her 10-year-old daughter. So the daughter had came through. So my mother started selling me when I was 10 years old. What? My mother started selling me when I was 10 years old to two friends and guys. Uh, her boyfriend yeah and they would come over and they would do this and they would do that so don't you think that she would be messed up you you okay tr- tr- give you Jesus give you the Buddha give you this give you that no 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 I, n- I need healing tell me how do I do this you have to go deep within yourself these are real life things and this stuff is happening every day but people don't like to talk about that or me too and this and this and that okay after you get through with all glamorizing all this after it's all glamorized here I am still hurting still broken still broken Bruce, <clears throat> help me what what are you going to do how 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 are you going to help me do I feel comfortable enough do you make me feel comfortable enough to come to you to talk to you about what I'm going through. And so that's what I am trying to build for us as, as black women, that as women, period, but predominantly for, for my sisters because it's us. Like right. I said, I'm a black woman and I identify as a black woman. And, and your, your, your sexual orientation doesn't have anything to do with me. I don't care about that. Right. That don't mean nothing to me. You're still my sister. Right. I'm not in the business of trying to judge or anything. I don't care about that stuff. So if y'all like what y'all hearing, Silent Cries, y'all can uh, get that on most streaming apps yes, and whatnot. Yes. Check her out. Um, and she's going to come out with a new one. And I'll let y'all know when I find out what the name of that one is. But check out <laughs> Silent Cries. Like I said, it's silent and it's C-R-E-Y-E-S. That's the title of it. And... um. Man, there was something else I wanted to ask you, but I, it's, it's slipping my mind Slip right your now. Mind. Yeah, but it's uh oh the website Supreme Lioness www dot uh, Supreme Supreme Lioness dot com mm-hmm. and it's affiliated with two other um, um Lyrical Jones Project Production Lyrical Jones Lyrical I, Jones she wrote it uh huh and I was trying to like man yes yeah, she's in Atlanta Georgia Lyrical Jones and uh, Aunt Sarah girls yeah okay. yes yes all right and what do they do they do the same thing um. No, well, yeah, Lyric, Lyric is a poet. Uh, she writes plays. Uh, she does She does plays. She writes plays and okay. stuff. Yes. All right. So um, I'm thinking you got to go. <laughs> so, um, all right. And I appreciate you showing up. I appreciate everyone that showed up on the show. I'm going to close out with one of her um, compositions. And uh, I, yeah, I check her out. And I'm going um, to give you all the information on her. I appreciate you, Sean. Peace and blessings. Thank you. I love y'all, sisters. Daddy was an eagle that could not fly, y'all. Yeah. Even as a young eagle, she always knew she was different from the rest of her family. Betty. Betty's family didn't know what was wrong with Betty. Why is she act so different from the rest of them? But most importantly, why couldn't she fly? 
They said, oh, she's just crazy. Some said she's just doing that for attention. They laughed and talked about old Betty real bad. That didn't bother Betty none. She kept right on walking with her head held high with a strut. But sometimes Betty wondered 